Well, hello to the Film Yap podcast, and I am joined here today by Alec Toombs, and you can probably guess that we are here to do our snap reactions to the Oscar nominations that just came out this morning. Alec, what, what were your first impressions? Uh, I generally thought the list was pretty good. There were some surprises. Uh, I was surprised that Greg Gerwig didn't get a Best Director nomination for Barbie. Yeah, uh, I was also... Also surprised Margot Robbie didn't get a Best Actress nomination for Barbie. Uh, America Ferreira getting a Best Supporting Actress nod for Barbie was a pleasant surprise, though. Yeah, uh, Ryan Gosling got the nomination for Supporting, but uh, Margot Robbie did not, and Greta Gerwig did not, which, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's the Barbie movie. Ken was great, but Ken is Ken. He's off to the side here. He's not as important. And we've got the the uh, yeah that Greta Gerwig not getting nominated. I also saw that Alexander Payne did not get nominated for director um, for the holdovers. Um, and now that we have you know up to ten nominees for best picture, uh, or I don't know, six, seven, eight, and I think they actually did the full ten this year. Uh, you know the, the conventional wisdom is only the films that got nominated for best director are actually in contention for winning Best Picture, which isn't really true because there have been a lot of great movies like Driving Miss Daisy that did not get, that won the Oscar for Best Picture but didn't even get a nomination for director. Yeah. That happened with Argo and Ben Affleck about a decade ago also. Yeah. Speaking of Ben Affleck, Air did not seem to get a lot of love. after. It got Trump. zero love, which really yeah. bummed me out. I think Alex Convery's script is worth a nomination and, and he wasn't talked about, but I thought Matt Damon was in excellent in that movie i know viola davis had been chatted about some she didn't get a nomination either uh the writing that convery gave them and the performances that they do in some of their monologues at the end of the movie i think were willing or worth nominations yeah the headlines coming out obviously uh in most outlets is oppenheimer leads the way with 13 um, nominations so it's kind of seen as the front runner the um uh ifga and a bunch of other critics group gave it to oppenheimer but Four things I think was next with if I've got it right eleven. And I was surprised. I mean, because very much not a traditional Oscar movie. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer has that classic Best Picture pedigree. It's a historical feature. It's based on true. It's you know this big ambitious drama, um, and it's um, you know it, it, it's a movie that comforts more than discomforts. I don't know. You could probably quibble with that. Whereas Four Things, Four Things is really out there. It's very different. It's weird. It's sexual. Um, I kind of predicted that Poor Things wouldn't do so well at the Oscars because that tends to be a more, an older, more conservative voting block there. But I was glad to see it. Yeah, I like Poor Things as well. Um, it is a somewhat more challenging movie that, that than's new, normally uh, nominated. Um, it did seem like it got a lot of its love in technical categories. I know director got nominated. Film got nominated, script got nominated, Emma Stone got nominated, and Mark Ruffalo as well for supporting actor. Yeah. I think so, the rest of their nods were all tech nods. Um, surprised Nyad did surprisingly well, considering not really being on anybody's radio. And I admit the one film I think on this list that I haven't seen yet. Um, I haven't seen it either. Uh, so I will have to go check that one out. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's wrong because. There's always some weirdo ones in best documentary and best international feature that just kind of seem to come out of nowhere. And you're like, I, I've not, not only have I not seen that, I've not even heard of that because those movies haven't been released even in a limited fashion in the States yet. So right. it ends up being ones we have to follow. And of course the short films, you know, I, I usually see the short films, but not until we go through them. Well, I'm just going to go through the list real quick with some ones that really stood out for me is, uh, love love it or or hate it. I really like seeing Coleman Domingo getting nominated for Rustin. I thought his was uh, the best male actor performance of the year. I was also very happy to see Paul Giamatti finally get nominated for best actor after his snub in Sideways uh, 20 years ago. Very happy about Jeffrey Wright uh, getting in there as well. I thought he was also in the top three performances for the year. Bradley Cooper, Killian Murphy. Murphy, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think... Um, Either of them are, it's like, hey, we respect you. We like your movie. Here's a nomination. You're not going to win. And Annette huh? Ben, yeah, Annette Ben. Who do you think is going to win Best Actor then? I think Giamatti uh, has. Okay. Has, he's won. He won the Golden Globe. Um, he won the Critics' think, Choice. 
I think uh, my money might be on Killian Murphy. I think Oppenheimer might run roughshod over the competition. That's entirely possible. The Oscars, unlike some of these others, the Oscars love a sweep. They love for a film to do well. So Annette Bening got nominated for lead actress for Nyad, and Jodie Foster got supporting for Nyad, which, again, very much surprising. Lily Gladstone, my problems with that movie are well documented. I don't, first of all, I don't even think that, that Lily Gladstone has a lead role in that. She's a supporting character. Um, that's my point. Sandra Hewler sneaking in there for Anatomy of Fall. That was a big surprise. Um, I think Emma Stone is probably the favorite there. Very, very happy about Sterling K. Brown getting into American fiction. That I loved his performance. That it's a role that really sneaks up on you. You think he's just sort of this, you know, unimportant playboy figure, and he just the character and the performance just gains weight and depth as the movie goes along. Um, no one else. I need to catch up with American fiction. It does seem as though Sterling K. Brown probably took Charles Melton's spot in the Best Supporting Actor category, and I know I was much hotter on Melton's performance in May December than you were. Um, yeah, yeah. But it seemed like he had a lot of momentum going into this race, and it just and, didn't. And, uh, and, and, uh, and no uh, Charlie Melton, no Charlie Melton for best supporting actor. Thank goodness. I, the, not to rag on Charlie, but I I don't know why that performance has been getting nomination love in the previously because I mean it's just it's not so much him. It's just just a severely underwritten role. Um, a lot of surprises in best supporting actress. Uh, I know you you loved him. I, I know you loved him. I thought he was great. I thought he kind of played uh, Arrested Adolescence beautifully. Like, when the trauma occurred, I don't think he ever grew beyond that, and he really conveyed that in his performance. So, for me, yeah. the performance is great. Well, I think you are in the majority on that one. Um, so, definitely some surprises. Uh, when I mentioned Jodie Foster, supporting actress. Um, Emily Blunt, of course, getting in there. Uh, Divine Joy Randolph has kind of been the front runner all along for the holdovers. Surprised, yeah, very happy. I think that that's America, her award to lose. Very happy that America Ferrara got in for Barbie. Very happy that Danielle Brooks got in for the color purple. Um, I was also um, hoping that uh, Fantasia would get in for the lead role for color purple, but I realized that probably was just just not in the cards. But very happy to see Danielle Brooks in there. Very happy to see America Ferrara in there. Um, yeah, those are. Some of these movies I need to catch up with. I didn't see Color Purple. I haven't seen Rustin. Um, oh, I know Rustin and I, Rustin and I Netflix. are both on Netflix, so I'll yeah. catch them that way. Yeah, he's on. That's on streaming now. As is Nyad, so those are easy to catch. Boy and the Heron for animated feature, Nimona, Robot Dreams, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse seems to be leading the way. I mentioned Elemental got in there. There was a real chance that there was going to be no Disney film nominated, Disney Pixar, that conglomerate for animated feature because they really didn't put out very good movies. Elemental was not a good movie. I mentioned that uh, the Annie Awards, which is the big animation industry award, had no Disney film nominated. I think it was either like the first time since they've had the Annie Awards or for many, many like decades and decades. And it's just an indication of Nimona. Uh, not a lot of people saw another Netflix film. Um, people, it, it, people think it's shocking to say the best animation platform right now is netflix they put i remember you reviewing that movie and being really hot on it netflix is putting out consistently good animated features every year not going to go through all these but you know the cinematography and so forth costume design i think pretty much all fell directing uh i think a lot of people were surprised for zone of interest and anatomy of a fall getting in justine triette for anatomy jonathan glazer for zone of interest just because those were well-regarded foreign language films, but I don't think anyone expected them to make it into directing. We did have a woman in directing, so thank goodness. Uh, but I think one of them, one of the other ones, I mean, you weren't going to knock out Scorsese, Christopher Nolan, or Yorgos Lath Lanth Lanthimos. Those, right? those three were guaranteed to be there. But I think Jonathan Glazer took the spot from Greta Gerwig again. I like Zone of Interest a lot, but I would have given it to Gerwig. I would have liked to have seen Celine Song get a nomination for Past Lives in the director category, but yeah, yeah, oh, that's... and the movie's leading lady, Greta Lee, as well. Yeah, it's tough with it when you're first, first, first feature to get nominated for director. It just doesn't happen a lot. The one uh, I should send Justine Triette, not to knock out the one woman or replace it with another woman, but that's definitely the one. I'm I'm really not as big on Anatomy of a Fall as others. I think it's have you have you seen that? It's a I have, you know, and I, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it quite a bit. Yeah, it, so, is, it is very long. So documentary, uh, yeah. So 
I thought I was doing pretty well, but I've only seen two of them. I've seen 20 Days in Maripol and Four Daughters. I've not seen Eternal Memory. Um, to Kill a Tiger is coming out here, actually, uh, I think, uh, in a little bit. So we'll have a chance to see that. Bobby Wine, the People's President, I have not even heard of. Uh, not going to go through the short films. So the international features from Italy, Io Capitano, not even heard of it. Perfect Days, I've heard of from Japan, but not seen it. Society of Snow, I think that's on Netflix now. Teacher's Lounge, I've actually uh, just got a screener for that. And then The Zone of Interest. Uh, glad to see Golda. Uh, terrific film, Nobody Saw, starring Helen Miller Mirren as the Israeli Prime Minister. Uh, was really, uh, uh, so it got a nomination for for hair, hair and Mike for for the Junos. Even though everyone hates Helen Mirren's Junos, it was a terrific nose, and it got recognized. Anything with, like, score, I'm Just Ken, of course, made it in there. And um, I think that's going to definitely win oh, the original song category. I think it's a slam dunk. Yeah. Rest of the things that the, the creator got in for sound, that's good. Mission Impossible, visual effects, the creator, Godzilla. A lot of people have been fan on Godzilla minus one, Gar Guardians of the Galaxy, Napoleon for visual effects. Um, oh, I was very happy about Cord Jefferson getting a screenplay nomination for American Fiction. Um, even though I think there's a there's a section about two thirds of the way through where it gets a little winky, it's just such a terrific mature piece of writing. Greta Ger Gerwig uh, did get in for for screenplay, so there, that's something. Yeah, she and Noel Baumbach. Uh, and Zone of Interest again, Jonathan Glazer. Great day to be Jonathan Glazer. You know he he did movie uh, he did like Sexy Beast. Sure, uh, I took my grandmother to see that movie. That was ill advised. She was like, "I love Ben Kingsley and Gandhi." Luckily, I don't think her hearing aid was totally working. Uh, that day, so she didn't hear all the uh, C words and F words that he was throwing around. But uh... all right, yeah, and then uh, original screenplay. So David Hemmingson for the holdovers. I like that because uh, I think this is his one of his first or very first produced screenplays. Uh, and I said I gave it the highest compliment. Is it? It was like the best Alexander Payne screenplay that Alexander Payne didn't write. It, yeah, that's kind of weird. He generally writes his own stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he's usually a produ either a producer or a writer or both on his movie, so it was actually rare, rare for him. Anatomy of a Fall getting in here, Past Lives, Celine Siong, they get in there. May, December, I don't like that one. I think that it's a severely underwritten or misguided script in a lot of ways. A lot of love for my a decent amount of love for Maestro. Bradley Cooper got got a bunch of nominations today actor director or it's not director producing for uh maestro writing that, that one I, left me kind of cold i, I like I wasn't, I liked maestro but it was like a, it was just like a solidly good film you know it, it was i really like, liked Li libatique's uh cinematography on that movie and i really liked carrie mulligan's performance cooper's performance didn't do nearly as much for me yeah some other ones like vanessa kirby for napoleon even though i think that film I mean, the biggest problem with Napoleon um, was that, you know, as written and, and and acted, the main character is just not very interesting. Um, no, she stole that movie for sure. Yeah, Vanessa Kirby was was the, the center of that movie. And I saw, uh, uh, I'm sort of, uh, uh, would have liked to seen her get in there. Um, we, we mentioned... Um, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, people are saying, but I didn't really see that. Saltburn um did not oh yeah any... that did that was kind of a surprise i figured maybe a screenplay nod or uh yeah because emerald... design perhaps yeah because emerald fennell won the screen the screenplay oscar for her for her first uh i think it was her first directed film um so people were uh interested it seemed in like that. jacob alordi and barry keegan both had a little traction going yeah uh, Fan uh, i mentioned fantasia um for uh, the color purple, I thought she was terrific. I I love the color purple, but um, at least we got Daniel Brooks. Oh, the film I did put number one on my list, which is All of Us Strangers, uh, didn't get anything. I, I, it was just too small a film. Was mainly on the festival circuit. I don't think it's even gotten anything. I think I, I, I think it was, just opened here, like last weekend, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it just opened here. I don't so, and it did not get much of a, a thing. We mentioned Greta Gerwig. People are saying I'm looking up some people's list of what they think is a snub origin. Uh, I, I I did not care for that film. 
It um, seemed like it was maybe something you respected more than you liked. Yeah, Pedro Almodovar, his new movie, Strange Way of Life, didn't get, but you know, it it, it, it didn't really, it hasn't broken well, through or gotten a wide release. It was also a short. I think it was only like 30 minutes long. Yeah. Um, oh, people have mentioned, uh, so neither Julianne Moore or um, Natalie uh, Portman. Well, Portman got nominated, so that's that's kind of interesting for that film. I mean, I would have okay. I haven't seen Nyad, but I thought they were both terrific in that film, even though I had other problems with it. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm lots to be happy about here. I mean, there's no. I will say this: there's no one big snub that's just screaming just at me. Gerber for director. I would say if I had to say the one that the one that stands out that's really like that one stings is Gerber for not getting director. Yeah, I would like to see more women get nominated. As we said before, Lanthimos, Scorsese, and Nolan were shoe-ins. But uh, I haven't seen Zone of Interest, so I can't compare that to the other films. I would have liked to have seen Gerwig nominated. I would have liked to have seen Celine Song nominated. And I still think Air deserves some nominations. I guess I'm just going to die on that hill by myself. But Yeah, I liked Air... Um, uh... Uh, that uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what, what's the uh, Jason Bateman. I would have liked to see Jason Bateman get a best supporting because I thought he was he was terrific. It's 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 like the classic like here's this guy in the background. He's the like the glue guy. He's the comedy relief character and so forth. But he gets like two or three scenes that are just like really weighty and emotional, and you're just like, <sighs> and and he absolutely. Stuck those, stuck the landing on those scenes. He was so terrific. I he was really good. Chris Messina was really good in the movie, and again, Damon and Viola Davis. Like, yeah, they had scenes in that movie that seemed like they were tailor made for the like clip that they show before they give their nomination. Yeah, Viola, Viola Davis um, was one that people are mentioning as a. It, it was a pretty small part. She doesn't come into the absolute very very end of the film, although. Other, other other people have. I mean, I, I remember the one nomination that I, I clucked about years ago was for American Gangster was, I think it was, was it Ruby D? Uh, okay. I mean, got us the Best Supporting Actress nomination, and she literally has two scenes in the movie. Not like Jason Bittman, he has two good scenes, and then he's, like, literally, she shows up right. in the movie for two scenes, and they're not long <laughs> scenes. And it was just like, I don't know, can you get an Oscar nomination for, like, four minutes of screen time? Apparently, maybe it was like a lifetime achievement award. But I, really, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's a pretty good list. Um, I think it's actually representative of the best films in the year. Would have loved, I would have liked to see Rustin get like you know best picture or a screenplay. I would. Domingo's liked... nomination was the only nomination for that film, wasn't it? But um, it, that makes me happy because that, that film did not get a lot of traction in the awards race. Um, and I thought he was terrific. I thought he gave the performance of the year. And he's action. been doing a ton of really good work, both on TV and in film, for a very long time. Yeah. So a, lo a lot to be happy about, some to quibble with, not be happy about. Like I said, I think Gerwig is the one that people are going to be talking about as, as they really miss the boat on that. And, of course, the usual documentary and foreign language films, everyone's like, huh? What? <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, we were we were discussing before we went on the, the way those things work is kind of a little weirdo. Like with the with the foreign language film, each country selects the film that it puts up as being eligible to be nominated, and in some cases, it's not the one. So I think you mentioned, um, uh, was it Anatomy of a Fall? Anatomy of a Fall was not the official French uh, selections, so it got nominated for Best Picture and other stuff, but not for foreign language film, where Zone of Interest was. Uh, what I country think, is Zone of Interest representing? Is it I'm not Britain sure. or Germany? Um, maybe Germany, although like the Jonathan Glazer is a British filmmaker, but so I don't know if that was like the German selection. Um, Google it, folks out there. Uh, and and Huller is in both movies, isn't she? Yes, she is. Isn't that funny? Uh, Sandra Huller. Uh, th that's interesting. Uh, oh, and the documentary, the, 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 the documentary thing is basically, people don't realize that like, not everyone in the academy votes for the nominations, only the people in that category. Sure. So, like, only the documentary filmmakers vote for the documentary uh, nominees. So they right. tend to go off and do their own things and select stuff. You know, the, the classic one being Hoop Dreams, you know, being far and away the most celebrated documentary of the year and not even getting nominated because those people didn't do it. But 
need to hear that there. I'm really excited about the Oscars. Um, I believe that's March 10th. Um, Sounds right. Yeah, so uh, we will obviously be doing uh, our our preview picks, and uh, we'll probably do our post Oscar reaction as well. And of course, we'll be live tweeting during the Oscar nominations, like we always do, so we can throw popcorn at the screen and vex and wail about the wrong people getting the award. At least as far as we're concerned. All right, Alex. Well, thank you. Join our chat, Chris. Thank you so much. All right, everyone out there. See you. Take care.